My name is Betty Krauss. Let me guide you on a journey into the world of abstract art where you have total freedom and where the art you create is only limited to your imagination. On my show, I'll introduce you to techniques, tools, and tips to turn your imagination into art. Together, we'll add a little more color into this world. Abstractly yours, Betty Krauss. Hi, I'm Betty Krauss and welcome to Abstractly Yours. Today I'm going to be introducing you to acrylic paints and how to blend the colors to create harmony. We'll talk about how values, saturation, and temperatures can enhance your paintings. Once we've gone over the basics, we'll put what we learned to use on a 36 by 36 canvas. I want to start by introducing you to the paints we're going to be using. These paints come from a Southern California company called Nova Color Paint. And I really love their paints for several reasons. First reason is the pigmentation. What you'll find as I start putting out these paints today in today's episode is the color value. The pigmentation is extremely high, which means that you're getting really excellent color. And then I also love the consistency. And I'll open up this one for you. So the consistency is somewhere between a fluid and a heavy body. So it's got some really nice weight to it. Um, when you're putting it on your canvas or on your paper, you can really um, feel the weight of that paint. And then last but not least, and one that's really important to me as an artist is the value. So what I have found with the Nova Color paints is that I'm not afraid to use them. And what that means is that when I'm painting, I put out paint and I use it, and I'm not worried about wasting any of it. I know with some paints, and certainly some paints that I've used in the past where I've put it out there and I know that it was a very high price, so I'm afraid to use it. So what happens is I don't really use a lot of it and it doesn't give me an opportunity to really express myself and to create with the colors. So I think that um, with those three different things, I think that you would also find a lot of value in Nova Color Paints. Let's talk about value, saturation, and temperatures, and how you should consider those three different areas each time you're putting paint on your canvas. All right, so before we get into color harmony, let's talk about the color wheel. This is a very basic color wheel, and we've got complementary colors. So when we look at the color wheel, we've got yellow across from purple, and those are as far apart as can be. And when we've got colors that are that far apart, they complement each other, and when you use that in a painting, it really adds a lot of impact. So that's one thing that you can consider, the red and green when you're doing a painting, a blue and orange, or if you're looking for something more monochromatic, you can stick with just colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. So those are a couple of things that you can do. So when we talk about value, we're looking at dark and light. So on a grayscale of one to 10, if we were to look at yellow, for example, a yellow would be very close to a one being very bright um, because it is a bright color. Where if we look at blue, much darker, and so it's gonna be a little bit higher on the grayscale. The other thing that we're gonna talk about today is saturation, and we'll talk more about that as we um, get into opening up the jars of paint. And that is when colors come directly out of the jar of paint, they are most saturated. It's when we start to add white or black to it that we are diluting that saturation. So when I talk about saturation, just think about how bright it is or how dull it is. So it's brightest directly out of the jar, but you start to, be, you start to create dullness as you add other colors to it. And then the last area we're gonna talk about today is temperatures. And that's really quite simple. There are, there are warm colors or cool colors. So when we're looking at the color wheel, we've got yellow, orange, reds, pinks are all on the warm side. And then on the cool side, we've got purple, blue, green. So when we're talking about temperatures, just think about the warm colors 
and the cool colors. And those are going to be playing into how we use those colors when we're painting and also when we're mixing paints. So those are some of the basics that I wanted to talk about on the color wheel. And next we're going to move into putting paint out on the palette and we're going to start um, I'm going to start showing you how when we mix those colors how they're going to create some harmony. All right so let's put some colors down on our palette. Um, we're going to start with the Nova color. This is Candium Yellow Medium and we're going to just put out a little bit of color today just so I can show you how we're going to mix these colors. So we've got our yellow. Um, how about some orange? And I'm going to wipe this off so that we don't mix the colors until we're ready to mix colors. Here's a beautiful orange, and this is um, organic orange, number 110, which is absolutely beautiful color. And this is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the saturation. These colors directly out of the jar are as saturated or as bright as they're going to be until we start adding white or black or any other color to it. Let's get this wiped off. And this is Pearl Red, another beautiful color. Put some of that out. And let's see, what else shall we do? How about some Phalo Turquoise? Turquoise is one of my absolute favorite colors. Just about every painting I do has turquoise in it. And if you can't see it on that final layer, rest assured, it's definitely on one of the other layers. What we're gonna start off with is when colors come directly out of the jar, we talked about the saturation. So these are as bright as they're going to get. So let's just start with our yellow here. And I'm just going to put some yellow down. Absolutely beautiful. And then let's move on to orange. Directly out of the jar, I have not done anything to them except for the purple. I add just a tiny bit of white. So these are fully saturated colors. So now what we're going to do is I want to talk about when we pull colors directly out of the jar and we line them up like this, we can see that we can see really the brightness of them, but also they don't really quite work together. This green is kind of a darker green. Uh, this uh, Turquoise, kind of a brighter color, and a lot of these colors are very much colors that maybe you would see in kids' toys, very bright, uh, very noticeable colors, but they don't necessarily all work together. And I think you're going to be able to see how much they don't work together once we harmonize them. So what we do to harmonize is quite simple. We are going to take a little bit of each one of the colors that we've put out and we're going to make a new pile of color. So I'm going to just grab a little bit of each. And really, you want to grab about the same amount of each one, but give or take. It doesn't have to be exact. So we've got all those colors, and I've got a little white on here, and that's okay. We're going to mix all these together. And sure enough, we're getting this really dark brownish color. It's almost got a bit of a red in it. And let me just squeeze that out. All right, so uh, this color in itself, not the prettiest of colors, is probably what you're thinking. And I'm kind of thinking that too. So I'm just going to show you what that looks like. I'm going to put some right here. So it looks like a really kind of a dark purplish brownish color. All right, so now what we're going to do is we've taken all of the colors that we've got here and we've created this color at the end here. And what, what this is now going to allow us to do is all these colors have come together and there's a little bit of 
each one of them within each other. Now we're going to take yellow and we're going to take a little bit of this brown and we're going to mix that together. And so we kind of get a little bit of a darker, I don't think I want to grab too much more. I'm going to grab a little more yellow. And at this point sometimes I might put a little bit of white just to lighten it up a bit. All right, so now let's put these colors down. So we've got more of a mustardy color here. Looks nice. So far, hmm, you're probably thinking, don't see much of a difference other than it's a little bit more mustardy. But let's wait until we get through the rest of these and you're gonna start seeing how these colors are gonna to work together. Now when we look at this palette, look at this purple being fully saturated directly out of the jar. See how well now these, the purple and the green work together versus these two, or the, the turquoise and the red, how these work together. So we're looking at all of these now, and they all have a little bit of each other within them. And that's what creates a harmony. So when you're, when you're looking at your painting and you're trying to figure out why it's not quite working the way you want it to, start thinking about harmonizing your colors. Now you don't have to sit down and figure out in advance all the colors you're going to use and mix them all together to harmonize them. Another thing that you can do, and, and I do this more frequently than, than actually creating a full um, pod of color like this, is I will just take my yellow and I'll pick, let's say, let's do purple. I'm gonna do a touch of purple in that. I'm gonna add a touch of white. And let's just harmonize with one color. So when I'm painting, I love to mix my colors and I am constantly mixing one color into the next. So as I go, I'm harmonizing. I don't stop and do all of this while I paint. So this is a very quick and easy way I'm just adding a little bit of purple to that. Let's add just a touch of white. So this is a much faster way to, to harmonize your colors. And you'll see that these are going to work together also because they all have purple in them. So you can see how these are also working together just at, by adding that purple. And they're really not too much different than what I've done up here where I've harmonized all of these colors. I think the yellow, I think we see the most contrast there. So let's go down the line here. I'm going to finish this up. So again, you don't have to sit down and figure out all the colors you want to use. You can just go as, as you go, you can mix colors. So I'm going to be showing you this later, but for example, if I am painting, I'm going to be doing something like this where I'm just pulling in different colors to create a whole new set of colors. Now, when I do that, I typically stick with my warm colors and then I work with my cool colors separately and I use white as well as we as we go along. So there's an example of a new color that, that I've created just using the three warm colors that we have here. So I hope that this gives you an opportunity to think differently about your colors and to not be afraid to, to avoid using colors directly out of the jar and to spend a little bit of time mixing them so that you can create a harmony and I think that you're going to see in your paintings how all of that is going to really come together and it's going to give you a new perspective and a new way of looking at your paintings and at your paints and how you can use them. Now that we've learned a little bit about color, let's grab our paint brushes and let's put paint onto canvas. Today you're going to see me get started on an abstract piece. And for me, abstract art is all about feelings and emotions and being able to express those on a canvas. 
I get a lot of my inspiration from flowers and more specifically from fields of flowers. So I think you're going to see that slowly come together today and we'll get through most of it today. And then I'm going to invite you back so you can watch me complete the painting in the next episode. All right, so we're gonna start with mark making, which is the way that I start all of my paintings. And the main reason I do that is because I really like to have an opportunity to loosen up. And the other reason is when you're looking at a white canvas like this, it can be a little bit intimidating. There's just so much white going on and sometimes you don't know where to start and, or just how to make that first mark. So this is a really great way to do it. I've got some colored pencils that I'm gonna start with. So let's do that. And my favorite color, as you can tell, look how small that is. So I just come in and I just start making marks. Now, another way to make marks is if you are right-handed, use your left hand. So in my case, I'm gonna switch over to my left hand, my non-dominant hand, and that allows me to really loosen up and just make some marks. And I'm gonna paint on the edges too, since I've got a deep canvas here. Get the top, all right. And I've got a couple more colors here. Now, another way that you can do this is if you're feeling like when you're making marks, you're paying too much attention to your marks and you really want to loosen up and make them more organic is that you can just look around the room or you can look out your window if you're close to a window and just follow the lines that you're seeing out there. So this is kind of a blind contour drawing. So you're not trying to specifically draw anything, you're just looking at the lines and the shapes. So I'm gonna look around the room, but I'm not looking at my canvas, so I'm gonna look a little bit higher. And I'm just seeing some lines over there. I'm gonna turn my head the other way, see what else. So that's another way to just loosen up. You don't need to think about what you're doing because on this stage of the process, none of these lines are gonna show in the final product. So go ahead and just cut loose and let's get some color down and let's loosen up. Let's start moving our arms around. I'm gonna also use a china marker. This is a black china marker. These also come in white, yellow, blue, and red. My favorite ones are the white, the black, and also uh, the yellow one. Maybe I'll switch hands here. All right, we've got a lot of variety going on here. I've got, um, this is a charcoal, and I think I just lost the lead on that one. Let's see if we can get this one to work at all. There we go. And I'll show you what else I do once I put down some charcoal. We're going to put some water on it. All right. And I've got um, graphite here, and this is water soluble graphite which simply means that if I add water to it, it's going to kind of spread around. It's not gonna stay in place like my china marker does here. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. And actually I'm going to dip it directly into my water. This is water from when we harmonized colors and that's okay. I'm just gonna draw with it like this. And you can see it's gonna be much darker when you put some water on it. Now the other thing you can do, like I did over here with the charcoal, I've got some charcoal marks down here, is I'm gonna take a paint brush and brush right over that. So you can just take this and not dip it and make marks with it and use your paint brush. I kinda of like dipping directly into the water and get an opportunity to get some drips going here. All right, so those are a variety of different mark making tools. Let's grab a brush here and let's see what this looks like. Let's see if I can find my charcoal lines. 
Now we've got a little bit of color because of my water, but you can see the charcoal lines are showing up a bit darker. I think I've got some other ones over here. I think we put some charcoal lines up here. This is actually charcoal right there. So we're gonna just run some water over those. So again, this is an opportunity to loosen up, to just have some fun putting down some marks and allowing yourself just the freedom to explore and to enjoy that first stage in the process. So we're gonna leave it there for now and then we're gonna move on and I'm going to be adding some black paint to this, which is, again, just part of my process. I love to add black paint um, as the next stage. And then we're gonna move into some more color. All right, so I'm ready to start on the next part. After we've done the mark making, I'd like to go directly to black. Now, some folks are really amazed that I have so much black on my first layers because when I finish my painting, you can see very little of it. But um, that's just part of the process of building up the layers and the texture and the interest. And so um, black by Nova Color is excellent. And this one is carbon black, which is my favorite because it's the darkest of the blacks. So I like to dip directly in, so I've got my big brush here and I typically start on this end just out of habit for me and we are just going to throw on some paint color here so let's add a little bit more I'm going to come all the way down to the bottom Go off to this side as well. Add some paint to the sides. And let's cover the top. And again, an opportunity to get your arms moving, stretch out a bit, loosen up. And then I just take whatever's left on here and just offload it, make some marks with it. So now that we've got that on there, I am ready to add color, but before I do that, I wanna add a little bit of texture. So I'm gonna grab my nail and my skewer and let's go ahead and add some texture using these. So with the skewer, I'm just going to make marks in it. And we can do the same with our nail. This one I've used a few times already, so it's got some paint buildup. All right, so that's one way that we start building up texture, and now let's put out some paint colors. All right, so let's pick out some colors. I'm gonna start with my favorite color, which is the turquoise. And let's get some down on our palette here. And I'm just using a plastic palette knife to put these down. I'm gonna wipe them down. I am a double dipper, which means I usually don't wipe these down, but I'm gonna wipe them down because I'm gonna switch over to the yellow. Let's get some yellow. And so I am starting off with the cool colors. Since I picked teal first, teal is in the blue family. And so I'm gonna work with the cool colors first. And the reason I like to separate the colors, so I'm gonna start with cools instead of mixing warm and cool as I go. And that way I'm not creating mud when I put down these colors. So let's switch and add some green. And yes, I've got yellow on there, but that's okay. Put down green. And here's another color that I brought with me. This is called blue green. And 
It's a beautiful color, but I want to wipe down this green. Let's put some of this out. Love this color. It's a happy color. And let's go with uh, purple. I'm going to also pick a darker blue. So let's pick after this. Let's grab a darker blue to go with our teal. Okay. This is probably enough. Even though we are working on a 36 by 36 canvas today, this may seem like it's not a whole lot of paint, but you'll see when I start adding white to it that it's really going to go a long ways. And this one is uh, ultramarine blue. Look at that blue color. Isn't that beautiful? Let's put down some of that. And ultramarine blue is quite saturated. And on the color scale, on the gray scale that we talked about for value, it's definitely closer to a 10. And this one is really dark coming directly out of the jar, but we're going to be adding some white to it. So I've got the titanium white. Let's put some of that out. And white, I like to kind of spread all over the place because I'm constantly putting my brush into it. So let's just spread some out so that I can pull some in wherever I need it. Put some next to the blue over here too. So between the colors that I've got here and the white, I think we've got more than enough to get going. Now here's my brush that I was using. And I'm going to, it still has black on it, so I'm going to be wiping it down. And this is my opportunity to introduce some gray. So instead of putting this directly into water, I like to keep the black that's on there. And let's just pick up some white. And I'm going to add some gray right away. Now I'm going to try to avoid some of my dark areas. so that I don't get too much black on my brush. So we talked about values, we talked about the color scale, and we're talking about light and dark. So here's a great example where we've got dark and we've got light, and you can really see the the, the way they play off of each other and how the light is really bright and the dark is really dark. So that's a great example of light and dark being next to each other and how well they, they work together. All right, so let's add some color. So I'm gonna go right into mixing color and I'm, I already had some white on my brush, so I'm going right into this bluish, tealish color. I'm going to add in a little bit of green. Let's add a little bit of yellow, too. There we go. Let's see what that looks like up on the canvas. That is a gorgeous green color. And this is what I mean by I may use a green that I don't necessarily, I'm not too crazy about the color, but once I add some yellow to it or another color to it, um, it looks just beautiful, um, especially when I add white. I add white to almost every color as I blend. Let's go for this darker teal here and a little more white. Let's see what that looks like. Very pretty next to this green. This one's got a little bit more teal in it bring in a little bit more of that. And so in the beginning process here, I'm just kind of making marks as I go, kind of up and down. I'll probably do some horizontal marks as well, but I'm just kind of putting down paint and, and putting down color. And this is really just our first layer, so we've got a lot more to do. So there is no right or wrong here. Let's just put down some color. And how about this? ultramarine blue. I just added some white to it. Just that alone makes it this beautiful color. 
And as I'm going, I'm kind of turning my brush and getting the paint off the edges as well. And I want to show you what that ultramarine blue looks directly out of the jar, fully satu saturated, much darker. Now let's add some yellow to that. And we all know that yellow and green, excuse me, yellow and blue make green. And this is kind of a darker green. I'm going to add some teal to that. Oh, that's a pretty color. Right, a little bit more yellow. All right, let's give that a try. I think it's going to be a little bit different than what we have down below. So I'm going to go back to what I talked about earlier. I'm going to grab my skewer here and let's make some marks into the wet paint. So I like to do that a lot in my beginning process, just so I can continue to add texture and interest. Let's go back in here and I've got the purple, so let's work on the purple. And I had some white on here and a little bit of that blue color. Let's see what that looks like. That's going to be really pretty. So in my early process here, I'm just trying to cover most of the canvas with color. And we're just working with the cool colors right now. And we'll save a little bit of room to bring in some warm colors too. Now you'll notice when I'm holding my brush, I'm not holding it like a, like a writing utensil or, or a tool, but rather to stay loose, I like to hold it closer to the end of it. And that keeps my hand loose and allows me to paint more freely. that dries, let's go ahead and grab our skewer again. So this part of the process is really very childlike, very freeing, very loose. You're not thinking too much about where the colors are going down. I want you to just feel comfortable just putting down color. So I'm just really starting to mix all my colors together so that I can get them out on my canvas. And before I go too far, let me show you another tool I've got here. This is called a rigger and it is, um, it's got very long uh, bristles on it. And this is great when you wet it down and Add it to one of your colors, pick up your colors, and this is a great opportunity to, to start making lines. Circles, you can make lines going across, and it works best if you've got enough water on it. Otherwise, it's really hard to, to make any shapes with it. So it's a fun tool to use, and we're going to be using this a lot more as we kind of get to the final uh, stages of this process. I'm just going to add a few more here. Again, we're on our early layers and this probably is not going to show up in the final, but maybe little bits and pieces of it are going to show through. So I mentioned that a lot of my inspiration comes from fields of flowers and when I make lines, circles representing flowers, lines representing stems or trees, um, in nature everything tends to be either vertical or horizontal. You don't see a whole lot of um, lines going at a diagonal. Um, and when you add lines that are at a diagonal, that kind of stops you and, and you look at it and you think, oh, well, that's not very natural. So if you're wanting to add some drama to your paintings, consider putting in a diagonal line. So these are probably not going to show up in our final piece, but I'll let you see what that looks like. 
So again, this tool is called a rigger and just a lot of fun to use as a kind of a drawing tool. Let's go back to our other one. Um, before I do, so I've got this other one that's um, a long handle. Let me see if I can see a number on this one. I do not see a number on it. Um, but it's got not as many bristles, certainly not as thick as my other one, but useful nonetheless. We can also draw with this one. And I love the long handle when I'm working on a larger canvas. Let's mix in some more paints. All right, so that's a couple of different ways that you can use those tools. I'm going to go back to this other one. I've got a lot of green on my palette, so let's use that up. While I'm thinking about it, let's go back to the skewer. All right. And just about done here using up my paints. add some paint at the very top and let's do some drips. So what I'd like to do is get paint on my brush and just kind of run that across the top here. Let's get enough there. I think I've got a little piece that's dried on. Let's take that off. And I'm going to pick up what I've got here on my palette. Let's add some more here. Spread that around and then I've got a uh, water bottle and this one you can tell it's well loved and it's helped me squirt a whole lot of these canvases. So again it's just water and we're going to just let that drip down and again adding some interest. Now that I've added these cool colors to the palette, I'm going to go ahead and let this dry now. And we're going to let these runs dry as well. I'm going to add a little bit more here. And then once that is dry, we're going to continue on with the warm colors. Before I go, I want to leave you with this. Abstract art is all about expressing your feelings through loose and free movement and color. Have fun experimenting and playing. Join me next time as we continue our journey through color theory by adding warm colors and additional layers to finish this piece.